Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. This video is going to be a lesson on exponents. While you can find the timestamps here, they're also linked in the description. Let's start by looking at an example like 2 to the 5th power. This bigger number on the bottom is what we call the base, and the smaller number up here is what we call the exponent. Combined, we call this a power. Simply put, a power is just a shorthand notation of writing a longer multiplication sentence out. 2 to the 5th power is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This would be the expanded form of the power, or the equivalent multiplication sentence. Here's a bunch more examples for us to look at. Using exponents, we can take each of these multiplication sentences and condense them into powers. Take note that from now on, when you see a dot, it means multiplication. We can also use this notation when we're multiplying fractions. Whenever you're writing a fraction in a power, make sure you put in parentheses so that the whole thing gets raised to the fourth power and not just the numerator. When multiplying decimals together, we typically just separate them using parentheses so we don't add any extra dots. Whenever you see parentheses next to another parentheses, it implies multiplication. We'll also typically write decimals raised to an exponent in parentheses as well. When multiplying negative numbers together, it's also pretty common to separate them using parentheses as well, since adding a dot for multiplication would add extra symbols that may be confusing. When raising a negative number to an exponent, be sure to put it in parentheses as well. In general, when you see numbers in parentheses, it's a good idea to try to keep them in parentheses to keep things consistent. Here this negative one stays in parentheses, and it's raised to the fourth power. Let's see if we can notice a quick pattern with exponents. 2 to the 4th power here is going to equal 16, 2 to the 3rd power is going to be 8, 2 to the 2nd power is 4, 2 to the 1st power is 2. So what's 2 to the 0th power? While this one's a little bit strange, the answer is actually equal to 1. The reason why this is true is because every time we decrease the exponent by 1, we took half of this number over here. When this 3 became a 2 here, we divided 8 by 2 to get 4. When we decrease the exponent one more time here, this became a half again. So hopefully it makes sense when we decrease the exponent one more time here, we take half one more time as well. Let's try that again. 3 to the 4th power is 81. 3 to the 3rd power is 27. 3 to the 2nd power, or 3 squared, is going to equal 9. And 3 to the 1st power equals 3. So 3 to the 0th power is just 1. Each time we decrease the exponent by 1, the value of the power became 3 times smaller. To fit the pattern here, this 3 to the 0th power must equal 1. You can try this with any other numbers, and you'll come to the conclusion that anything raised to the 0th power is equal to 1. No matter what this base here is, if the exponent is 0, it'll always equal 1. Now let's talk about how to read powers correctly. You would read this first one here as big 4 little 5. Totally kidding, don't actually say that. Instead, we would read this as 4 to the 5th power. For this one, we would say it's 2 thirds to the 4th power. Here we would say 2 tenths to the third power, or 0.2 to the third power, but we could also say it's 0.2 cubed. Anything raised to the third power can be read as to the third power, or cubed. We would read this one as the quantity of negative 5 cubed, and we would read this one as the quantity of negative 1 to the fourth power. The only ones where you may be more confused with names are going to be things that are raised to the second power, and things that are raised to the third power. We can call this one x to the second power, or x squared, and we can call this one x to the third power, or x cubed. Now that we went over some background, grab something to write with and something to write on, and let's do some math together. Here in example one, we're gonna practice identifying the base and an exponent of a power. Remember, each of these are powers. This base for the first power is going to be four, and the exponent is going to be seven. For this next one, the base is gonna be two and seven tenths, or 2.7, and the exponent is three. For this one, our base is actually a fraction of 2 fifths, and our exponent is going to be 0. And for this last one, our base is negative 3, and our exponent is 5. Our base always represents the number that is going to be multiplied over and over, while our exponent tells us just how many times we're going to multiply the base by itself. As a shortcut, we write them as a power. In example 2, we're going to practice expanding and condensing some exponents and multiplication sentences. Let's expand this first exponent, or power. This would be the multiplication sentence for this power. Let's try the second one here. Practicing using our parentheses as multiplication, this would be the multiplication sentence for 2 sevenths to the fifth power. Now let's condense the multiplication sentences into an exponent. 
Instead of writing negative 1 half multiplied by itself four times, we can say negative 1 half to the fourth power. And here, instead of multiplying 0.9 by itself five times, we can say 0.9 raised to the fifth power. Well, in these first two examples, we went over what these powers really represent. In these second two, we condensed the multiplication sentences into powers. Here in example three, let's start evaluating or solving these powers. For this first one, two to the fifth power is just two times two times two times two times two. We know two times two here is going to be four, times two is going to be eight, times two is going to be 16, times two is going to be 32. Two to the fifth power is equal to 32. This is what we get when we evaluate two to the fifth power. For 36 to the zeroth power, this is just equal to one. Keep in mind that anything raised to the zeroth power is equal to one. For 5 to the 4th power, that's going to be 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is going to be 25. For 25 times 5, I can do that on the side here just to show you the work. So that's going to be 125, and we have to multiply that by the last 5. So 125 times 5. 5 to the 4th power is equal to 625. This is what 5 to the 4th power is equal to. And for this last one of 7 to the 5th power, that's going to be 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is going to be 49. And let's multiply that 49 by 7. 49 times 7 is going to be 343. Now we have to multiply that by 7. That's going to be 2401. And one more time, we have to multiply by another 7. 7 to the 5th power is equal to 16,807. Together, we just solved four of these powers. And finally, here's example four, where we're going to evaluate powers with rational bases. When we see the word rational, we're typically just talking about fractions and decimals. While natural numbers and whole numbers are also rational, we're talking about fractions and decimals here. For this first one, we have 1 half to the 7th power, which means we're going to have 1 half multiplied 7 times. When multiplying all these fractions together, we're going to multiply all the 1's together to still get 1. Then we have 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, and times 2 is 128. Our denominator here is going to be 128. Whenever you raise a proper fraction to a whole number exponent, it gets smaller. Think about if you had half a cupcake and you kept taking half of that half. If you took half of that half seven times, you'd have 1 28th of the original cupcake. Now let's find what 1 10th to the fifth power is. Expanded, this is... When multiplying decimals, remember that we just multiply the whole numbers and ignore the decimals in the beginning. Multiplying 0.1 by 0.1, 1 times 1 is going to be 1, but we need two decimal places. Since we need two decimal places, we're going to slide the decimal twice to the left, so we get 0.01. Now we have to multiply that by this 0 0.1. 0 0.01 multiplied by 0 0.1 is just going to get us a 1, but now we need to move over 3 times. This will be 0 0.001. Now we have to multiply this by another 0 0.1. So here we'll multiply 0 0.001 times 0 0.1. That's just going to be 1. But we need to slide over the decimal 4 times. Here's the decimal, and we're going to add in 3 zeros here. And finally, we're going to multiply by 0 0.1 one more time. That's just going to equal 1, but now we have to move over 5 times. After moving over to the left 5 times, we're going to have 4 zeros. Our final answer here is going to be 0 0.00001. That's the value of this power. Let's expand this next one here. Since I know we're going to be multiplying fractions, I'm just going to start off by converting our mixed number into improper fractions first. We should look to cross cancel, but since we can't, let's just multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. 2 times 2 is going to get us 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. We know our denominator is going to be 16. For the numerator, 5 times 5 is going to be 25, times 5 is going to be 125, and times 5 again is going to be 625. While you could convert this to a mixed number, this is also an okay answer. And let's expand this last one. Remember that when you're multiplying decimals together, it's good practice to use parentheses to show your multiplication. We don't want too many dots all over the place. Let's start by multiplying this 3.4 by 3.4. 3.4 3 
Now let's take this 11.56 and multiply that by this 3.4. The value of this power is 39.304, or 39 and 304 thousandths. This would be our answer. And that wraps up this basic lesson on exponents. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll go over using these exponents in order of operations problems. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.